Assalamu alaikum everyone, welcome again. In this video we'll talk about the important basics of parasites, including its different classifications and their life cycle. So what is a parasite? A parasite is basically an organism that derives all its benefits from another organism, while harming that organism in the process. Therefore, there are different classifications for the parasitic association with the host. It can be either an obligate parasite, which can only survive in a host, a facultative parasite, which can survive with or without the host, and then they can be either an endoparasite, which is a parasite that only lives inside the organism, or an ectoparasite, which is a parasite that lives on the body surface, on the outside. Endo means inside, and ecto means outside. The parasites can be divided into two major groups, the protozoa and the helminths. In this video, we'll just talk about the protozoa, and hopefully in the future, we'll make a video on helminths. Just to mention, the helminths are simply worms. So first of all, we're going to discuss the structure of the protozoa. The protozoa are single-celled eukaryotes, and they don't have cell walls. They can also form double membranes or cysts to become more resistant. During the life cycle of each parasite, it goes through two medically important stages. The first one is the infective stage, and the second one is the diagnostic stage. The infective stage is when the parasite invades the host and causes the infection. And the diagnostic stage is when we as doctors can realize that the patient is infected with that parasite. There are several ways in which we can classify protozoa, either to their site of infection or to their type of movement. The major classification of protozoa is according to their type of movement. Thus, we divide them into four major categories. The first one is amoebas and they are parasites moving with pseudopods or cytoplasmic projections. Pseudo means lying, so pseudopods, fake legs, let's say. And then we have flagellates, and they are parasites with two or more flagella. And then we have the ciliates, which are parasites with cilia. And then we have the sporozoa, which are non-motile, and therefore they are obligate intracellular parasites because they can't move. Now we're going to discuss the important medical protozoa, of each type. The first one belongs to the amoebas, and it's called intamoeba, and it's mainly transmitted via the fecal oral root. Fecal means the feces, and oral means through the mouth. So basically you ingest either contaminated water or contaminated food. The intamoeba has different species that infect humans. However, we're concerned with the intamoeba histolytica due to its pathogenic characteristics. It's very important to be able to differentiate it from the other species, such as intamoeba coli because it's non-pathogenic, so it doesn't affect us negatively. Basically, E. coli and E. histolytica can be differentiated according to the number of the nuclei in the cyst. So if it's more than four nuclei, then it's considered as E. coli, and if it's less than four, then it's considered as intermoeba histolytica. Next, we're gonna move on to the flagellates. And in the flagellates, we have three major types. Giardia lamblia, Trichomonas vaginalis, and Leishmania. Giardia life cycle starts with an infection via the fecal oral root, which is, like I mentioned before, through the ingestion of contaminated food or water. Then they release the trophozyte, which is binucleated, so two nuclei, and the small intestine. And then they multiply by binary fission. After that, the trophozytes move to the colon, where the cyst formation occurs. Therefore, Giardia has two life cycle stages, the trophozyte and the cyst. On the other hand, the Trichomonas vaginalis is transmitted via sexual contact and replicates its trophozytes without forming any cysts. It usually resides in the female genital tract and the male urethra and prostate. Thirdly, we have Leishmanias. Leishmanias are usually transmitted via sand flies, and it resides in animals such as rodents or dogs. So the vector of transmission are the sand flies, and the reservoir of the parasite are the rodents and dogs. The infected sand fly has the promastigote form of the Leishmania, which is flagellated. And then it infects the host through the blood, and it grows in the macrophages in the form of amastigotes, which means it doesn't have a flagellum. This is the diagnostic stage of Leishmania. There are several disease manifestations accompanying the infection with Leishmania, such as cutaneous ulcers and Kala Azar. Kala Azar is simply a severe form of that infection, and the symptoms usually are enlargement of the liver and the spleen, so it's pretty life-threatening. 
Lastly is an important type of sporozoa, which is plasmodium. Plasmodias are the main causative agents for malaria, which is a really serious disease. The life cycle starts with the female mosquito, where sexual reproduction takes place between the male and female gametocytes. After that, the mosquito bites and injects the sporozoites into the host. These sporozoites migrate to the liver, and this is referred to as the exoerythrocytic cycle, because the sporozoites hasn't invaded the red blood cells yet. Then the sporozoites mature into schizonts inside the liver. After that, the schizonts rupture and release merozoites into the blood to invade the red blood cells. At this stage, it's known as the erythrocytic cycle because it's in the red blood cells now. After that, the merozoites have two pathways to follow. Some of the merozoites will grow into schizonts again, and then they rupture, and then they release more merozoites, more invasion of red blood cells, and then the cycle repeats. However, some of the merozoites will develop into the sexual forms of male and female gametocytes, which will then be taken by the mosquito, and then sexual reproduction takes place, and the cycle repeats. So for Intamoeba histolytica, the infective stage is the cyst, and the diagnostic stage is the cyst and trovozide. For Giardelamblia, the infective stage is the cyst, and the diagnostic stage is also cyst and trophozide. For Trichomonas, however, remember we didn't have a cyst, so the infective stage and the diagnostic stage is the trophozide. Then we have Plasmodium, and the infective stage is the sporozide, when it's on the female mosquito, and the diagnostic stage is when it's during the erythrocytic cycle inside the red blood cells. Lastly, we have Leishmania. The infective stage is the promastigote when it has the flagella, and then the diagnostic stage is the amastigote when it loses the flagella and it's inside the macrophage. And we're pretty much done with the parasites. Hope you enjoyed. Please give us your feedback so we can improve in the next videos. And don't forget to like and subscribe to get our new videos and explanations.